Now that you've mastered the hemodynamics of cardiogenic shock, let's use our favorite equation to understand two other common types of shock, distributive shock and hypovolemic shock, and how to differentiate them. Distributive shock is by far the most common type of shock, and the most common cause of distributive shock is sepsis due to overwhelming infection. There are other causes like pancreatitis, anaphylaxis from allergies, and burns. But since sepsis is the most common, let's use that as our example. So here's that equation again. Since this is shock, MAP will be low. Once again, let's start with the primary insult. For distributive shock, this is a drop in SVR, which in sepsis is due to the blood vessels dilating and becoming leaky due to factors released by the bacteria. So in distributive shock, the SVR and MAP both drop. Now let's try to predict the body's compensatory changes. Well, stroke volume and heart rate will both increase in order to try and maintain MAP. So we expect a person in distributive shock to have a heart pumping hard and fast to try and maintain perfusion to the organs. And what about treatment options? Well, we just learned that the primary insult is reduced SVR caused by the blood vessels becoming dilated and loose. So vasopressors, which constrict the vessels and therefore increase SVR, are a great treatment for septic or distributive shock. Recall from the previous med mastery lesson that this is in contrast to cardiogenic shock, where the vessels are already constricted and SVR is raised as a compensatory mechanism. And now, let's look at what happens in hypovolemic shock. Again, MAP is low. But in this case, the primary insult is a decrease in blood volume, for example, due to hemorrhage or massive diarrhea. But where does blood volume show up in our equation? If you imagine the heart is a pump, the less full of blood it is, the less it can pump out. So if we drop the blood volume in our circulation, that will eventually manifest as decreased filling of the pump and therefore less blood pump with each ventricular contraction. So the stroke volume is low. But wait a minute, isn't that exactly the same as cardiogenic shock? Well, if we are just looking at this simple equation, then yes, stroke volume is low in both hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock. But the reason the stroke volume is low differs. In cardiogenic shock, it's due to a weak pump, so adding extra volume won't help that weak pump. But in hypovolemic shock, it's due to an underfilled pump, so adding extra volume will solve the problem. Preload reflects the volume of blood inside the circulation. So in hypovolemic shock, the primary insult is low stroke volume caused by low preload. In cardiogenic shock, the primary insult is also low stroke volume, but caused by a weakened heart. The preload is actually increased compared to normal due to activation of the kidneys to retain sodium and therefore water which is a topic for another day. It's sufficient to remember low preload in hypovolemic shock, just like the name says, and high preload in cardiogenic shock. And once again, we can predict the body's compensatory changes for hypovolemic shock. Heart rate and SVR will both rise in an attempt to maintain MAP. Thankfully, it's usually pretty obvious clinically if a patient has massive hemorrhage or diarrhea, so hypovolemic shock is relatively straightforward to diagnose. Just remember, when managing shock, you must start with the primary insult and then determine the compensatory changes. We can build a chart to help remember the differences between the three common types of shock. So in cardiogenic shock, the primary insult is reduced stroke volume and the compensatory changes are increased heart rate and SVR. For distributive shock, the primary insult is reduced SVR, and then stroke volume and heart rate both increase to compensate. And finally, in hypovolemic shock, 
the primary insult is low stroke volume with the compensatory increase in heart rate and SVR. Now let's add a column for preload, which we just learned differentiates cardiogenic and hypovolemic shock. In cardiogenic shock, remember the preload is high, whereas in hypovolemic shock, the preload is low and actually causes the primary insult. Just to complete the profile, for distributive shock, preload actually drops because the blood vessels are leaky in addition to being dilated. Therefore, the amount of blood volume in the circulation drops similar to hypovolemic shock, but for different reasons. You might want to take a moment to draw the chart for yourself and quiz yourself by starting with the primary insult for each type of shock and then predicting the compensatory changes.